Okay, we got a no cooling call here. It is a warranty call. It's a pretty nice little mobile home park we've worked at once or twice. Not crazy about mobile homes, but you gotta do a little bit of everything every now and then, whether you want to or not. There's our train XL 15 seat, good old unit. I'm afraid it's got a leak. Let's find out. All right, I went ahead and connected to it. One of our techs has already been here before. It's another way I know it's got a leak. See a little bit of dye in the cap. Standing pressure right at 160 is a little bit low as well. She went in and turned it on. that low side racing down let's open this side here up We don't get holidays, not often. uncapped <sighs> okay I'm gonna let it stabilize a little bit right there and go get our light and see if we can see anything. My reflectix out here to sit on. Grass is pretty wet. There's our purple light. You can see the dye all over the pipes there. Looks like our hose has got a drip, got a leak. We're gonna check all those too before we leave. Let's take a look at this coil if we can. Looks like we're gonna have to take some of this flashing loose to do that. Yeah, it looks like the installer missed it by about a quarter inch. We could have trimmed that off a quarter of an inch. We'd be able to get this door off without taking the flashing loose, but that's not a big deal. Not too dirty. All right, let's see. And I do not see any dye in here. 
this is back in the day when we still had copper coils and they didn't leak near as much that right there could be the whole problem even around on the valve I don't see anything Normally the pan would be full and you'd see it all in this drain if it was evaporator related and I just don't believe it is. So let's go to the next step here. Alright, so another one of my little tricks I learned from an old man a long time ago is to take a little gauge take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the cord depressor out so normally you'd see a little stem right there in the center of that rubber that would depress the core and when you take that out of the fitting it gives you the ability to hook the gauge up without depressing the valve and see if that Schrader is leaking. And indeed it is, look at that. Look at that. Look at that, okay. Not to mention my hose dripping right here. So let's check all of them right quick. All right, it appears that one is not leaking, the gauge is just bouncing from the vibration. So it's not moving up. So let's check this one. And that one is also not leaking. And I'll tell you what, for a service tech to miss such a simple, obvious fix kind of makes you shake your head. Look at that. So let's see if we can fix it. First thing I'm gonna do is just take the tool out and see if it's loose. Okay, 
So it's definitely not loose. I mean, it was really tight. So we're gonna take it out. Okay, so another way you can tell is by putting your tool on, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. When you put the tool on there and close the valve, it doesn't take but a minute. Now, actually, if you use a backup wrench and a wrench to tighten the flare nut, you could probably seal that without actually replacing the core, but we're gonna try to fix it with the core. Many years ago, I was doing one and I just could not get the core back in it. I fought it over and over and over and ended up leaving my tool on it and capping the tool. And I mean, I never saw it again, so I guess it's okay, but lost a $50 tool doing it. Did not get it that time. Empty again. So it's obviously loose in there. This one's gonna be a tough one, I can tell. So I just tightened it back up so I can remove the tool. I'm gonna try a different one. And this is a good one here. It's a yellow jacket. Try the El Cheapo.
All right, well, as you can see, I got it out with this other tool. I don't know if that's an Appian or not. I think it's just an El Cheapo, like a JB or something, because there's no name, it just says one quarter. It's definitely an El Cheapo compared to this super duper brand name yellow jacket, as long as I can remember, Richie. Disappointed in that, but that's okay. Let's see if we can fix it. Okay, then after you've changed it, a good way to test it is leave the valve shut off for a minute and open it. You should hear a little if it's still leaking like we were getting before. I'd say this is fixed, but then we will also double check it. with this. And it's tight and it is not moving. So I'm gonna get three brass type flare caps. I'm gonna have two wrenches and hold back up and I'm gonna crank these down. And to be honest, the only way to have a perfect charge would be to evacuate this and weigh in the factory specified amount. There's no way to charge a package unit more accurate than that but they give you this little spot right here for reading subcooling and as long as your outdoor coil is clean which it is you can do pretty well that way but if i were to take the time to remove this charge and evacuate it to 500 microns and weigh in uh 410 it would actually be better all right, before we cap this off and pick all this up, I'm going to, uh, I've hooked the subcooling clamp back up and I'm gonna double check this charge and just make sure we're good. And yeah, I like that a lot actually. Let's check the outdoor temp right quick. Okay, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna leave it right here. It's not quite 90 degrees, so we're certainly fully charged. And uh, I don't know that package units actually give you a subcooling target. They certainly don't, uh, they don't expect you to be charging it on the fly like that. So what we should do is pull it down and weigh in seven pounds and three ounces. I'm gonna trust my instincts on this one. 
and I'm going to leave the charge in it that we have in it and I think we're fixed here's the tools this is handy everybody should make themselves one of those I had another one with a little six inch hose on it haven't seen it for quite a while I don't know what happened to it just pull the little valve stem out of the center right there with a pair of needle nose and you've got a great Schrader tester and you can do it with these as I was also demonstrating but even a very slight one will show up on the gauge pretty quickly um, once again I am surprised that my high dollar Richie yellow jacket got outperformed by the El Cheapo generic who knows what Maybe this was bent or something, I don't know. Maybe I had it a little too tight, I don't know. I did, when I had it out, uh, when I was changing tools, I did very slightly loosen the Schrader core, the actual valve core, when I went to this one. So that might have gave that one a little head start, a little cheat there. Let's put this thing back together. Okay, let's demonstrate the right way to put these on. So that one was a little challenging. You just gotta be patient and find your angle that works. These were easy. But I use this little Craftsman wrench because it's real thin and skinny and it'll, it'll go in there. Best thing to do is probably take an actual open end 3 8 or 7 16 whatever that is, and hold it with that but as long as you're using two wrenches, and this one is called a backup wrench, that way when you crank this one down, you won't twist that out of the pipe. Um, I'd say this thing is fixed. Might wanna look a little closer at this valve. It doesn't look like the, the seal on it is bad, but obviously the stem, something's going on with that. That was our culprit.
tell you, this was some of the last of some of the good ones with copper coils and everything in it. The government has really pushed all of us downhill and made things worse when they think they're making things better. Tell you what, efficiency is not really worth the price when they claim losing refrigerant into the atmosphere is the the uh, the actual objective. <coughs> Then why in the world don't they go back to the machines that rarely ever leaked? I mean, an R22 machine or any any type of machine with copper coils, and we had 410, you see one right here with copper coils, they rarely leaked. I'm going to say probably 10% of the leaks we see with 410A is, is what we had before we got into 14 sear, 16, all that. You know, I love the high sear stuff, I really do. But to mandate it just doesn't seem like the thing to do. But let's not get political here today. Let's just say, let's hear it for the government mandates on the HVAC industry. That one looks a little bent. Something kind of cool she's got in here. Take a look at it. Five degrees cooler in here already. It was up to 96 when we got there. So you got a light in there. Yeah. Yeah. And that moon, the moon is up on that little hook because we didn't want to take that out. My son helped me with it because, you know, you, you don't want to take everything out because eventually somebody might want to put all that stuff back in. That's it, pretty cool. Pretty. Little well, canoes. The husband said, oh, let me take a picture. My wife will love that. <laughs> and the coyote. Yeah, and the bears are up front. And the pipe wrench. Yeah, yeah, and the little bears. Little tools. I, uh, one of the, uh, the guys that came and did some work, he, he loved it. He looked like out in the woods like, and he just dearly loved it. That was his thing. So at Christmas time, I'm gonna send him a picture of the Christmas scene that I put in there. It is. Oh, you change it at Christmas? Yeah, I put a, there's a white uh, poster that we've got with all the snow on it and stuff. And, uh, That's pretty is, cool as an alternative to building fires. <laughs> yeah, we never used it. My, when my husband was living, we just got it for looks when we bought the bubble home anyway. 
and it's like one day I saw something kind of like that, but not really. And I said, you know what? And I just went from there and did it. I first turned around that street, well, for when I turned around that last time, it, it felt cool at first, and then it got hotter and hotter. So it's 90 right now. 90K, so it's 66 degrees cool. And you're saying it was 96 when I got here? Good Lord. So, I have my fan. If I'm, as long as I'm staying in front of the fan, I'm Fan don't do nothing when <laughs> it's this hot. It helps when it's that hot in here.